Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And this Wednesday episode is sponsored by Gray Fox Games. Hello. Yeah, my brain. I am so tired. <laughs> my, I completely forgot what I've said every episode for like 128 you just, episodes. You just, you just fell back to what everyone does and just repeat Seinfeld. Yep. Is that a Seinfeld thing? That is absolutely a Seinfeld thing. <laughs> Like a girl broke up with him because they were all doing it to each other, and then and then he came to her door and then did it, and then she slammed the door in his face and he just walked away happy. Nice. <laughs> Hello. A lot of breakups in that show. Yes, I haven't watched Seinfeld in a very long time. I know a bunch of our friends are big fans. Yeah, uh, I like the things that show like the breakdown where like even George Costanza, who in the show is played off as like this like unlovable goon, has had just a ballistic shit ton of girlfriends and <laughs> yeah. sexual encounters. Welcome to sitcoms. Yep. Yeah. Not real life, some would say. Not IRL. No. But I guess actual Seinfeld probably also has had a lot of that. I mean, yeah. I'm Helps when you're like a multi-millionaire. Yes. Very famous person. I don't think you even need to be that rich. Just very famous person. Yes. It's all that Netflix money now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, Just shy of a billionaire. <laughs> Jerry's oh, like, were you looking up his net yeah, worth? Yeah, I was like, he's got to have a billion dollars, but no, he's only, he's uh, says, estimated at 950 million. Okay, he's Just, almost there. He's almost there. I bet that before the Netflix evaluation, yeah. I'm sure he got some stock options in that. Yeah, see, I'm curious, like, you know... Because obviously uh, most people who are billionaires don't just have like a vault with a billion dollars sitting in it or a yes. bank account that shows a billion dollars. They've got investments and own things that are... Uh, I would even say most millionaires probably have that too. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So like I wonder what his actual like liquid value is. $2. <laughs> Whatever pocket change he has on him. He has to make sure he can afford that coffee for the comedians and cars getting gas. coffee. And No, gas you can use on a card. That's true. Credit card, and then he can do it later. Yeah, but um, Air, American Express, he was always on the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All that Superman merchandise isn't going to pay for itself. Exactly. Uh, it's a little different with somebody like him, but I often wonder too, like like Jeff Bezos, like what gets, like why does Jeff Bezos keep working? Like why why does he feel like I still need to do things? You know, like I would still do creative shit if I was like fuck you rich, like Seinfeld or Bezos. Uh huh. You know. Like, I'd still do podcasts. Like, I'd have the coolest fucking podcast set up, and I'd just dick around with my friends and have fun, because, like, that's fun. And then, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's fun for Bezos to run I mean, Amazon. Some people there are, some people just like working, like, so. Fucking like, weirdos. Yeah. I mean, I've got a motherboard coming from Amazon right now, so I can't say anything bad until that hits. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with Alexa listening over there. Yeah, see? <laughs> Great, my dog food's never going to show up, and Jester's going to eat me. They're going to leave it on the sidewalk or something, not even close to the front porch. They just sort of slide it in your general direction, and the ice just makes it go to, like, four doors down. Yeah, yeah. They whip it out of the door yeah. as they drive by. Yeah. Uh, luckily, they're small bags. I can carry them from four houses down. Well, yeah, but no, they'll burst from the throwing, and then they'll just be a, a raccoon and <laughs> squirrels just eating them. And All the fucking geese. Feral stray dogs. And then, <laughs> then you got a straight, you got a feral dog. Problem. Yeah, well, Jester will fit right in. She was a stray, so <laughs> she speaks their language. All because we bad mouthed Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and not even, not even necessarily bad mouth. <laughs> Just wondered what, why Bezos does the things Bezos does. That might be crossing a line that we're unaware of. So it's best not to risk it. Yeah. Uh, so what's everybody been up to? Leg's still broken. Really, it didn't heal. I mean, it's healing. Legs, like broken leg is still healing. I guess yeah. it's a better update. Uh, this was like the third time you've come over since you've been on crutches to yes. my house. Yes. Uh, twice for podcast, once for board gaming. Yes. It was the first time that Jester did not absolutely lose all of her shit. Yeah. Like she did not just go ballistic and crutch spaz. madness. Yeah. Like I said, she doesn't like to see weakness. So <laughs> again, she was a stray. She, yeah. Weakness is a death sentence mm, yep. when you grow up on the, the harsh, harsh streets of Denver. Or it looks like you have four legs now and you're like, <laughs> oh, now we're on the same. <laughs> Now you're a threat. Yeah. <laughs> Got weird metal legs, and I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> He's become too powerful. He must be stopped. Yeah. Doesn't even know about the metal in my leg. No. no I bet you could smell it. Yeah, the titanium. Titanium has a distinctive odor. I'm I don't sure know if you're aware. I have no idea. 
I don't think it does. I mean, just start smelling know, like, your leg and see if it's anything different. <laughs> smell your one leg and then smell your other. It's kind of, I, mean, I guess it smells like a... And then have Katie walk in and then just try and explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see if my titanium leg smelled any different. <laughs> I don't have to wrap it in a garbage bag anymore, that's so I good. guess it is washed. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Oh, you are. That's right. It's it's just in the boot. You don't have like a wrapping. Yeah, over there's it. no cast, no okay, nothing. Yeah. So the the boot can come off whenever I feel like. Nice. They wanted me to sleep in it, but I'm not gonna do that. So I don't do it. Gotcha. And it was only because like if your like toe gets caught on like a sheet or something, yeah. it can kind of like wrench <laughs> your ankle. <laughs> You're like, I broke my leg again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's I turned the wrong way when I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was careful and didn't really put it under sheets or anything. Gotcha. I was gonna like, do you have like pillows next to it or underneath? Yeah, underneath them. No. Yeah. Uh, but even that's starting to get uncomfortable. Yeah. That was one of the shit things when I broke my collarbone was trying to sleep, like because especially because I'm a yeah. side sleeper, and like you can't obviously sleep on the side where you broke the collarbone because then you have your whole body weight pushing down on your broken collarbone. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the you worst. Could, you could. You could well, try. You, you, no, your body will not let you. <laughs> um. But even like laying on your other side, like it still wants to move weird and like that hurts. And laying on your back, like you still like switch and move. Like you don't realize how much movement affects where you're like across that collarbone shoulder yeah. area until it causes excruciating pain every time mm. movement happens. Yeah. It's very frustrating. I basically had to make like a pillow fort that completely immobilized all of me to sleep. Yeah, it was I can, the worst. I can move around fine now, but it's just trying to get the leg comfortable, which yeah. is annoying. It still kind of blows my mind that it's not casted at all. No, yeah, there's a big rod in it. Yeah, and then you have to cast it. I just know, like, it, it it it's a sign of how far like that kind of medicine has progressed. Because my mom, when she was like 17, spiral fractured her leg skiing, and they had her in a cast that like was like almost all the way up, like ankle to hip, mm-hmm. like just completely immobilized her whole leg. I bet yeah. if it was a cleaner break, I would be in a cast. Yeah, maybe. But since I had to have surgery and a rod put in, it's sort of just like. They want to make sure they can get to it if needed. Well, I, mean, they I, I think it's just cast, that like the, a cast's not going to do anything. We right. already put a big metal rod in it. Yeah, and yeah. That's just holds how it's it gonna, all in the right yeah. place that it needs to be. Yeah, I know. When I got my cast on my arm, I had three different casts, and it was like four or five months for it. So, and the first one was all the way up to the shoulder, even though I broke it right near the wrist. Ugh. Yeah, don't glad, break bones, people. I'm glad I can bend my knee. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? We both did it doing apparently very stupid, <laughs> stupid things. Yeah. So, yeah. I forgot my bike had brakes. I just jumped off it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Tuck and roll. Yeah. I was great under pressure as a nine year old. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, but no, I did actually make friends with a co worker, though, uh, at Shitty Job, uh, which I don't care if he, like, cause he knows the job shitty. So if he starts listening, you know, cool. Um, but he was, he, he was laughing his ass off uh, over in his little workstation. I was like, dude, but. Like, what the fuck are you like cackling Pound, about? Pounding out dents in microwaves. Yeah, uh, he works with dishwashers. I see. Uh, so I was pounding out dents in an oven. He was, you know, working on a dishwasher, and uh, and he was cackling. And I like looked at him quizzically, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm listening to this new podcast." And like he turns, and it was not another D and D podcast, okay. which is a D and D podcast I've listened to. Uh-huh. Mm. And so we were talking about that a little bit. And I was like, "I actually, uh, I actually do a D and D podcast." And he was like. What? This one? I was like, no, not that one. I, I wouldn't be working here if I was on that popular of a podcast. I'm sure I'd make enough money that I could do not this. Um, I was like, I also do a board game podcast for like three years. And he was like, no shit. When I left Indiana, I had like a whole wall of board games. It's like, sweet. You should start coming to game nights on Wednesday. He's like, I would, but it's my wow night. It's like, you are way nerdier than I thought you were. I'm sorry, but the new World of Warcraft expansion is not good. You should stop playing WoW and play board games. I'll tell him that tomorrow. Yeah. I'll be like, my co-hosts say that the new WoW expansion is it was, garbage. It was fine enough, like, like uh, some uh, decent amount of the expansions, unfortunately. It's fine when you're playing through the story, but when you get to end game, you're just like, nah. it's, it's definitely been one of the worst in the long, like, I don't know, probably the worst expansion? I don't know. I mean, for, well, and I think part of that is just all the changes that Blizzard, like, the, the people running Blizzard yeah. have, have happened, and so they've been... Making it go in bad directions, so it's bad. It's bad expansion. I feel like I may have tried WoW, you know, a decade and a half ago when it first came out, and I was like, "No, fuck this." I did, I did not get sucked in. Understandable. I played EverQuest two for a while, Guild something for Guild a while, Wars. Guild Wars for a while, and then uh, 
I've played a little bit of Lord of the Rings online with Megan. That thus concludes all of my MMO experience. Um, we started playing a new uh, battle royale game. I don't. Did we talk about it last week at all? I don't remember if we talked about it on air. Okay. I remember you guys were talking about it because Jeff was like, "Adrian, don't you dare start playing. We want to keep playing." <laughs> yeah. So play on Xbox or something. Yeah. No, Go I'm just else. not going to play. Good battle royale games do not appeal to me. Understandable. It's fine. Yeah, uh, that means we can enjoy. This is yeah. Apex Legends from uh, the. It was oh, who, Respawn who did uh, Titanfall and Titanfall yes. 2, which yes. are both really good games. And Nice. They did all of the good Modern Warfare Call of Duties before they moved. After the development of Modern Warfare 3 fell out because EA had a bunch of like hired goons go in and start like interrogating people in rooms and stuff. Weird. About like, because like the director or something was wanting to leave because there was a whole bunch of issues with them holding back uh, money from Modern Warfare 2 to make sure Modern Warfare 3 was done, uh-huh. and then the guy was super pissed about it, and they that was a whole big deal, and then everyone left, and they had to bring in another development company to finish Modern Warfare 3, and that's why there's two development teams on the back of that box. Oh, uh, okay. I think gotcha. they brought in Sledgehammer. Oh, okay. It was another Call of Duty at gotcha. this point. But right. then they respawn. Basically, everyone left and made Respawn, okay. which is why their shooters are real good. Yeah. Cool. But Apex Legends is also real good. Free free to play. Yeah. Which is great. That's oh, what, well, maybe uh, I will try it. Yeah. yeah. That's what uh, Fortnite did. That's why we've been trying yeah. to get you not to play because it's free. <laughs> and as soon as you get it, it means we have to stop playing. Well, I, I might just, <laughs> I might just might ruin that tomorrow night then. <laughs> we just won't know. We won't know that you're on there. Yeah. You won't, we won't give you our origin names. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's through origin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, it's an EA game. Yeah. Because no. no. I'm, I'm Steam friends with you, so that wouldn't work. You can link your Steam friends through Apex Legends or something. Yeah. It's super weird. Yeah, I haven't done it though. Yeah, I haven't. So. I I haven't had it work. So yeah, that, that that's helps. also true. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just be guessing at you guys' usernames, knowing using what little bit of information I know. You'll about ne- you guys. you'll never guess them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's only three man squad so far. Yeah. I've I've heard leaks of like two and solo duo and solo and also like a co-op survival mode. I don't know about that. And like two new legends, one called Octane that has like an adrenaline sort of mechanic and another one that's like a Tesla kind of electrical one. Okay. Uh, Because the characters on this one, it's not like PUBG where you're just a dude. No, you have a class. Yeah, you have a class like Overwatch. But it's not as... Like, everybody has, like, their little abilities, but everyone still has the same weapons as whatever you find. And stats. Like, yeah. everyone jumps the same, everyone runs the same speed, yeah. except one person might have a perk, where they're, if they're under fire, they move a little faster. Exactly, yeah. But it's not like, oh, shit, I'm this person, and you're that person. I'm fucked. Yeah, it's not so. like a tank versus a DPS. There's yeah. nothing like that. But there are characters that have more mobility mm-hmm. with their powers, or one that gets fed ultimate accelerant and just keeps calling down supply drops. Yes, you're not wrong. <laughs> or, um... Or a robot that's just zip lining across, but yep. then will accidentally zip zip line off a cliff, which is uh, what Trend did. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we were we were at the very end, and then he set up his ultimate zip line, which just stays. Yeah, which is cool. And then the circle started coming in, and then he went, and then clearly all the other teams had seen that zip line get set up, and we were like, "Oh, as soon as they go on that zip line, we're just going to murder all of them." And that's uh-huh. exactly what happened. Yeah. And I said that was a bad idea, uh-huh. and. Th- and he left and got murdered, and we were behind. And he's like, oh, we all should have gone. And I was like, no, that was a stupid <laughs> idea. We could have just run in undercover. Yeah. Well, it's like how I find out blood. Uh, found out Bloodhound's, like, little- Radar. Radar ability to see if any hostiles are right around him. It, apparently, it's just a giant orange circle that everybody can see. <laughs> but it does only work in front of you. Yeah. But you can see that big- yeah, ping, happened. and so we were just running, and like, cause I'd always just been like, oh, I'll just ping, yeah, ping, ping, because I thought it was just me, and then all of a sudden, like, I did it, and then we immediately got pincered by two teams, it's cause like, cause <laughs> big orange blur yeah. just happened in a corner. Yeah, uh, but I won, a, I won a bunch of champions yesterday, like back to back to back, which was nice. Nice. So my computer was like, nah, yeah, <laughs> nah, we're just gonna shut down, and then it works for like forty five minutes, and then it just shuts down again. Well, good thing you're getting a new motherboard. Finally, yeah. Yeah, that motherboard just happens to have that issue where it just does that. And the only way to fix it is just to send it back until they send you one that works. Except gotcha. I got it from a friend, so I can't send it anywhere except back to him. Yeah, send it back to your friend, but like, give me a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they told me to keep sending it back until I get the right one. Yeah. So mm-hmm. take it. Yeah. Right on. So I get to rebuild a computer tomorrow. Again. Fun. Actually, like, 
doing that. I do too. Yeah. yeah, just I'm sure just, I'm sure the leg won't like tedious also like doing it oh, yeah. having to continually do it because shit's not working. That's yeah. true. I need to I actually I'll probably borrow a screwdriver that I can get those uh motherboard offset pins oh, yeah. off easier. Real quick before we move on to board game shit. Uh, I was very disappointed. Uh, the new Civ Six expansion dropped on Valentine's Day, and I was looking forward to it. Gathering Storm, it added, I was, like, was going to say the oncoming this. Storm, but I think that's something else. Yeah, um, but it looked awesome. Like all the things it was supposed to add looked great. I was really excited for it. And then I went to do a little bit of research to make sure it lived up to that, like on Friday or whatever, to see if Megan and I should get it and get back into Civ again. Especially because it's a forty dollar expansion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it turns out that uh, Take Two has used it to dump a bunch of data mining shit into Civ. Uh. Yeah. Uh, so it comes with a new uh, user license agreement that includes quote. <clears throat> The information we collect may include personal information such as your first and or last name, email address, phone number, photo, mailing address, geolocation, or payment information. In addition, we may collect your age, gender, date of birth, zip code, hardware configuration, console ID, software products played, survey data, purchases, IP address, and the systems you have played on. We may combine the information with your personal information and across other computers or devices that you may use. It seems like a lot. So, like, cool. Well, I guess I'm done with Civ for now until yeah. they... You know, hopefully reverse course on that. Uh, the the reviews on Steam for it have tanked. Not surprised. Because everybody's just massively not recommending it because of that. So pretty, pretty shitty. Um, yeah, that's that's my little bit of PC updates. Now let's get on to some board games. Sure. Zach, what have you been playing? Uh, I'd say the main one, like, like most weeks, 80% of the games I've played has also been games that you guys have played. <laughs> yeah. Sounds right. about right. Uh, but the main one I wanted to highlight that we didn't play together is I got a chance to play Azul again, and uh, we were playing with the Joker tile expansion, which are like these clear little tiles that come out. Okay. Um, and basically what they are are wilds. So, you know, it's like it, on, on the factory, if there's like a red, a Joker, a blue, and a black, you can take the Joker tile and then choose to get one of the other colors. And then you get to, um, you know, put it on your... I don't know, whatever those, like the, wherever you set them, whatever that's called. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so it's, you know, it makes it easier to fill out these, um, all the different, you know, all the requirements you need for the, the different tile placements. Uh, but anytime you use one joker, it, it becomes a joker tile instead of, so even if you use like four red and one joker or one red and four joker, it's still a joker tile, right? Yes. Uh, and you place it. Like normal, but now you can't get that uh, ten point bonus for that color because you've used a Joker instead. Oh, okay. So if it replaces one of the reds, now your reds can't get those. So then you're like, oh, well, I'll just you know use Jokers for these reds because it's really easy for me to fill that up now because it doesn't matter. Um, but there's like twelve of them, I want to say, or something like that. Eight to twelve, I forget. Uh, but it made it. I mean, it was still Azul, but it made it just you know something more to think about. Um, and then I, I also crushed Lance and V at it. And she's, I think she's slowly coming to terms with the fact that she shouldn't sit to my left in games. No one should. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to do it. <laughs> Paul. What you do is you have a, you have a game and whoever loses, the, no, whoever wins has to be the person that sits to my left. <laughs> Great. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of moments where I'm like, oh, well I could take this or I could take this. So I could take this and nothing will happen, or I could take this and it'll screw over V. But that one also happens to be the best thing for me, too. So I will be doing that. And a lot of fuck you, Zachs, and goddamn it's came out. So feel like fuck you, Zach, is one of the most commonly issued phrases uh, in our board gaming group. You're not wrong. Fuck you, Zach, and goddamn it, Paul. Yes. Fair enough. Yep. Adrian, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. We use that oh. one constantly. <laughs> Jeff, tell Adrian it's his turn. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was, that was pretty much the only thing of note. I, oh, um, no, one more thing too. I okay. forgot. Oh, uh, yeah. On Wednesday we played Stockpile, which, you know, great game. I got to play my favorite character, Moneymaker Mitt, who his only, his ability is anytime you bid, you get a thousand dollars. And so it's real fun, nickel and diamond people and people not learning that they shouldn't let me do that to them. Like over and over again, they'll, they'll go on zero and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go on one now. And they're like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, well, I'll go on three. Well, I'm just going to go on six now. 
and just like and just keep making money that way. But uh, Wes ended up winning that game because he his character let him issue out a stock or a uh, a dividend at the end of each round. Which per the I have to look, but per the rules that I saw, it doesn't matter if it already had a dividend or not. And he got heavily invested in um, Stanford Steel, which is also very dividend heavy. Mm-hmm. And so he made a shit ton of money with that thing. Ah, nice. And I, I kept trying to tank it, but then people would get like one Stanford Steel stock and they're like, well, now I'm invested in this company. I'm like, fuck you. No, you're not. Look how much more. you're getting a thousand dollars. Wes is getting like eight or nine thousand dollars each round because of it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be dumb. No. And then at one point I had a chance to. Um, raise up Epic Electric to spaces, and I ended up choosing something else that was gonna. I was like, oh, this one will make me like Epic Electric will make me slightly more because I was planning on selling it at the end of the turn. Um, and I was like, it'll make me four thousand more dollars if I do this, but I'll get like twenty more thousand dollars if I if I raise up Bottom Line Bank or however much it was. And then I did. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not gonna do Epic Electric. I'm gonna do Bottom Line Banks. And then the next two people are like. Well, I'm going to reduce Epic Electric down by two. Well, then I'm going to reduce Epic Electric down by two, and it crashed. And I had like seven stocks of that that I wanted to sell that Oof. round. And I was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was bummed I didn't make game night this week, uh, especially because we were like, there was plans for Stockpile like way in advance. Mm-hmm. And uh, I haven't played Stockpile in a while. It's a good game. I think the last time I played it, I, used, I played the app when yeah. I went home for Christmas last, yeah. I think. I like the app until. Uh, like I haven't played any actual people with it. I've only played AI, and AI is stupid. So yeah, uh, they would keep, <clears throat> especially uh, because it's only base game. There's like only one or two people that have like tw- that start with twenty five thousand or more mm-hmm. money, and so they would keep loading up like one stock to have like nine things in the beginning, and then it's like, well, of course the person that has a shitload of money is just gonna take it, and then now they have a huge, you know starting hand or starting advantage. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn it, you fuckers. And so I got tired of seeing it enough that I was like, motherfucker. So, gotcha. Yeah. Right on. Yep. Uh, I did not play much. Uh, like I said, I skipped game night this week. Um, so really the only things I played uh, is a game that Jeff will talk about a little bit later. Uh, and then I got to play on Friday. We went to the game lounge, just kind of arbitrarily fell together that – a bunch of us were like, let's go play a bunch of games. Well, V invited a bunch of people, yeah. and then... But none, lo- like, none of us were planning on going, yeah. and then everybody was like, actually, I think I might go. Oh, well, if you're going, I think I might go. Okay, well, so let's she all was, go. She was expecting like four people and nine, nine. people still showed up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she gave us some uh, well-deserved shit uh, about that. Well, I didn't get... I, I don't even remember how I heard about it, and I was like, oh, I'll go. Probably Paul or something like uh, that. No, it was me, because... Oh. Uh, as soon as I decided to kind of go, I was like, well, maybe Zach or Jeff can come and like play some review games because uh, we were trying to get games Especially played for reviews. It's really close to where I live. So. It, yes, exactly. Um, Unlike here. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, we played, uh, I played a few games there, uh, Wingspan, which we'll talk about on Friday. Uh, and then I played a three player game of Isle of Sky. Uh, and it's been a long time since I played, or not Isle of Sky, Island. Spirit Island. Ah. Uh, <laughs> It's more than two player. (laughs) Yes. It's been a long time since I played with more than two players. Uh, We were, I was uh, the uh, rapid growth forest spirit whose name I'm drawing a blank on. Ever, everlasting growth? No. uh, I can't. I'm drawing a total blank on it right now. I am so tired. Uh, Allison was the lightning one. And then Paul was the really complex fear one. And we played on the thematic board, and we played with uh, Sweden, I think it was, where if they do six damage, they blight twice. And uh, their surge ability was anywhere where uh, invaders outnumber Dahan when the surge icon comes up, then you replace one Dahan with a a town, uh, which is pretty brutal. Uh, As is the case with every game of Spirit Island I've ever played, it felt like we were getting beat pretty handily, and then we crushed face and won. Uh, there's just kind of a, there's like a def- definite power curve there where like the first bit of it is going to be tough. The island is going to get ahead of you as you slowly build up, but then provided you play well and you manage that early phase of the invaders really being strong, then it's pretty easy to come out and, and wreck face. Uh, rampant spread of green was the, ah. the, the, the spirit that I was, um, one of my favorites. So 
It was uh, it was good times. Uh, always down for more Spirit Island. It was nice to play a game with more than two players. Uh, I'm sure. Where everybody actually knew how to play. So there was never any, like, having to teach or remind, like, you know, everybody's played it recently and understood the rules, so we were able to just set it up and jump right in, which was great. Uh, and then after that, uh, we were still finishing up some drinks, so we decided to play uh, three-player Hanabi Deluxe with the tiles. Uh, Allison doesn't play with the wild cards because uh, she feels that it's more difficult. Um, I mean, it is, but, I mean, it's six piles you have to worry about instead of five. Or are you talking about as wilds? No, she played without it. Well, I know that, but I mean, oh. are you talking about like playing it as using a the six rainbow? Suit? No, as its own suit. Okay, yeah. So play. So yeah. basically, we played with five suits, yes. not six suits. Yeah. Um, but playing with the tiles is so much easier. Yeah. Like because of how you can really like I never once got confused about what I had or forgot what I had. It was just really easy to be like, all right, these are in like these specific spots for these specific reasons and kind of have my own like and it wasn't even a, a, like something I had to discuss. Like, you know, some people criticized when we reviewed Hanabi the one time and talked about like some of our meta rules yeah. like that kind of come in that it's defeating the purpose or anything and that you shouldn't have to talk about it beforehand. It should just be playing. Well, with the tiles, I didn't have to discuss with anybody. Like, I just had my own organization system that I used to keep track of all the clues I got. And they'd be like, okay, what do you know? Well, I know this, this, and this, and this because I can organize my shit in such a way that I know all of these things are true. Um, so we uh, we were one short, though. We played four player at Geekway, maybe four or five. Uh, we got a perfect game on our first try. Nice. With the tiles? With the tiles, yeah. yeah. First time I'd play with the tiles. But it's it's definitely, lot, yeah. It's a lot easier to manage your hand when you have a 3D space. Yes. Yes. So, uh, that's been about all I played. Saturday was a D and d session. We recorded episode 10 of Mile High Dungeon Delvers. Uh, it was a really good episode. Wes is kicking ass as the DM. Uh, no combat in this one. It was all inside a city. So there's a lot of skulking around in the shadows because we're all, uh, various races and things that people look down on. Ah. So we have to like pretend to not be a band of badass adventurers and instead pretend to be like lowly slummy people. Did you release any starving dogs into the city streets to shred children? We did not. Okay. No, we're not monsters. I mean, we did that in Lamentations. But... Yeah. Well, you're monsters. <laughs> so you're not too wrong. I mean, we needed, we didn't want to fight the dogs. We just didn't want to get rid of the dogs. Um, 43 children later. They may have culled off most of the dogs. <laughs> yeah. I really want to talk about something that happened in the episode, but I don't want to spoil it. Then don't. I'm not going to, but I'm just saying that something really awesome happened that I really want to talk about. Was it as awesome as dog mur dog murderers? Children dog murderers? Dogs that murder children. <laughs> I mean, it's supposed that that depends on whether you think dogs murdering children is or isn't awesome. Depends on the universe that is under law here. It depends on the child. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's what I've been playing. Jeff, what about you? Uh, we played something we haven't really mentioned at all. Uh, the first couple rounds of Betrayal at... Is it just Betrayal Legacy? Yes, it is. Just Betrayal Legacy. Yes. Um, it's good. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. We don't want to spoil anything. Uh, the, so minis, the minis are terrible. Yeah. The minis are real bad. Um, the little... Colored rings that you put underneath them don't stay on well. The, the shit thing with those is they stay on just fine when you're shaking the shit out of it and like trying to get them to fall <laughs> off. Well, it was like the first five minutes, Adrian and I were like, this feels like it's super loose when you put it on. We're like, oh, it's not coming off. I guess it's good. And then through, we played the prologue and then the first chapter. And, and basically almost every time you pick up your piece to move, yeah, it, it just stays behind. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what it. the fuck? Um, uh, everything else is pretty much just betrayal. All the tiles look straight out of regular mm -hmm. betrayal. Oh, uh, they're definitely well, no, updated. The, there's new, well, there's yeah. new art. So stuff. there's, you know, there's an outside now. Yeah. yeah. Instead of, uh, you know, and then also, which we weren't playing with, you can immediately go to the basement. Uh, you don't have to, uh, find the basement landing, you know, stairs or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the event cards are tied. The event cards and the items are tied to, um, the floors. floors, yeah. So if you're outside, you're gonna find one that's like outside, related, related. So, uh, yeah. So you're not gonna find like something that you'd be like, why is this outside versus like crossbow gonna yeah. be kept inside? Exactly. Maybe in the guest bedroom. Maybe, yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> um, 
it has a lot of cool new mechanics that uh-huh. we won't necessarily talk about, like some tweaks and things. Like they're not really spoilers, but I know like some people, like maybe Ant, for instance, doesn't yeah. want to hear super a sen- sensitive about those kinds of thing. things. No, yeah. Um, the but, one thing I I will say is that the prologue we did has been my single favorite betrayal experience ever. Yeah, it was amazing. It was good. Um, but yeah, it's it's been. And then f- it got straight to bullshit in that first chapter. Yeah. <laughs> But it was at least clear bullshit. Yes. You knew what was happening. Yeah, they have they have a, a lot clearer mode. Like, the, the rule books, like, it's... So, uh, when this was first, you know, when Betrayal at Howls on the Hill first came out from uh, Avalon Hill, Rob Davia was work Like, he worked on that. Um, but, like, he didn't work on the uh, Which, Widow's Walk or anything like... Widow's or, Walk? Yeah. Or the second edition or any of, the, any, any of those. And the game was made, like, fifth. I want to say, like, 15 years ago, but probably less than... Um, but this was his chance to also sort of cl- like modernize it a little bit, but just try and clear out, clear up a lot of issues that uh, some people have with the game. And uh, so there's like a, a lot of clarifications in this, and it's like what what a person is, what a hero is, what a traitor, what what's a monster. Fifteen years ago, yeah, two thousand four. Nice, I was right. Um, but yeah, it's I think it's uh, been a good job so far. Um, you're tied to a family now instead of. A character, yeah. Your your player boards, which are much better yeah. than the originals, yeah. Um, but they still have the little sliders, uh-huh. and... which each one of them is unique too, which is yeah. which is cool. I like just that. like the regular betrayal. People. Well, yes, but the fact that like on that one it was tied to a specific person. It's like yeah. your family, like my family is just good at might. And Mine has like, a better sanity yeah, that I start with, which has worked great for you the past two times. It has no sanity <laughs> damage at all. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and I'm definitely looking like, and it on um, it's like every game is like a generation, so it's like twenty. It was like twenty eight years from the first the prologue to the first game, which this all this is on the the player board that you originally, the backside yeah. of the player board. Yeah, this is which all is, stuff you you see immediately. Yeah, yeah if before you even start the first game. Yeah, if you've ever played Pandemic Legacy, uh, on the back is where you sort of write what who played and what yeah. happened. That's all that it is. Yes, it's a little tracker. Yeah, and so. The five different figures. So also that's another thing too is that this is just three to five players instead of three to six, but it does have a, it has things that will scale depending on the amount of players. So yes. it shouldn't it was recommended at like obviously best is five, but it's like we played four and it felt fine. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to playing more. As am I. It's like a it's like a good betrayal that hasn't been around in a while. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm especially looking forward to the fact that we can continue playing betrayal. With yeah. it afterwards. Yeah. Once you're, I mean, there's 50 scenarios in here. Yeah. I would say uh, th- there are 13 chapters in a prologue. So at most, we're going to see 13 f- chapters in a campaign. Yeah. Or 14 of the scenarios of the 50. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but you don't have the full 50 open to you and the very beginning. Well, that, yes, that yeah, is true. Y- yeah. It's That's, not like a, you're not playing like regular betrayal where it's no. just 50. It yeah, actually it sort goes, of branches. Yes. It, there as a, far as we can tell, it, it seems looks, like a story is happening yes, here. Yes. Which is, yeah. Which is cool. I don't know what else I can like. Everything I want to say, I feel like is verging on spoilers. Yeah, I feel yeah. like we're already verging pretty heavy. on No, spoilers, I know. I'm gonna. So. Um, but yeah, I, I I liked it so far, and I'm really looking forward to playing some more. Yeah, at least we didn't punch out all the tiles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, because it comes with a bunch like like legacy where you're gonna be adding stuff. You also add in uh, room tiles like. Yeah, it starts with a very small deck because it builds like a small little like shack. And yeah. then like in the second episode, like it's a little bit bigger. Then yeah. it gets a little bigger and then a little bigger and a little bigger. Yeah. Until you, you know, it becomes this big sprawling. And apparently mansion. some people have like not realizing it were like, oh, here's a bunch of tiles to pop out. And they did that. And it's like, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We even, we when we added ours for uh, the first, like after the, pro, uh, the prologue, like we didn't even look at them. So mm-hmm. like, yeah. and. So we don't even know like what rooms are are maybe getting added or exactly not. Like, yeah pretty much anything we add we try to add without revealing it first so that yes. when it comes up it's it's uh, fresh yep uh, because it is such a small deck a lot of things come up uh, frequently like, especially uh, if you're out in certain because it's tied to certain lo- n- yeah. to certain Areas. environments yeah. yeah so yeah more on that uh, in tidbits as we play mm-hmm. mostly just general feelings I'm sure. Yes. And then eventually we'll do a uh, ruins. a ruins episode. Ruins, ruins, ruins. A ruins. I believe episode. that's a Mile High Game Guys. Ruins. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> correct. Um, cool. Anything else you've played, Jeff? That you want to talk about? I played a whole fucking day of Blood Bowl. So bloody minute it is. Yep. Bloody bloody tournament. 
So bloody half hour. Everybody can uh, just go ahead and tune out now, like I'm going to. Uh, so this is the KO Bowl. It's our like first of the year sort of baseline tournament. Uh, one point one five million. Uh, yeah. To build a team, you have 150k to put skills on your team. Everything else is just regular everyday standard rules. Um, I think we had 14 for the tournament. 12 or 14, I could probably pull it up. Doesn't matter because Ant had brought a uh, person to be the off player because we were expecting Paul to show up who mm -hmm. just didn't register and didn't show up and didn't say that he wasn't coming and just totally fucked with everything. So Ant's friend had to sit there all day uh, because he was uh, he was actually the old, my boss's at work's predecessor. And I guess he was in town hanging out with Ant. And he's like, oh, you can come to this Blood Bowl tournament because you will probably need an odd man out. And then Paul just didn't fucking show up. So fuck you, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I had a feeling that he wasn't going to. Especially because so. he had Matt's team and Matt had no team he could play with. Like he, he fucked over multiple people by just not showing up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He, he earned his bullshit Paul title. Uh, Did not Saturday. know that. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, uh, Ant had an extra team. Of course, he did the, uh, that he could use. The the other side of Paul doing that was that I had to get up in the morning before D and D and drive the medals, the awards, the, up, the, up the trophies. To the, yeah, yeah, to drive the trophies up there. Because yeah. otherwise, like when Paul dropped me off the night before, I could have just given them to him. Yeah, it's true. But uh, the the registration kind of went up a little bit. It's like twenty twenty five bucks if you register late. Uh, but that is now going into like. Better prizes and cooler trophies and cool stuff like that, which I'll get to at the end. Um, I'm playing Orcs again just because it's really my only paid team, and it's actually the one I know best, so I can actually do pretty well with them. Uh, first match was me uh, against another Jeff, a uh, nice guy that was in a different bracket uh, last season. Um, I think I did like a pre—I did a preseason game uh, against him uh, with his Dark Elves, and he was playing Dark Elves against this time. Man, what a no nothing game that first one was. Uh, <laughs> it, I was just bashing him over and over and over and over and just not getting anywhere. I think I ended up, uh, I got a bunch of KOs, which is my usual. I think I got five KOs against him. I surfed uh, three people, uh, one of which went to casualty, the other two went to reserve. I think I got one actual casualty the whole game, which was a super bummer for how much I was hitting him. Um, fouled out, foul casualtied out his witch elf. Uh, but also banned my, uh, got my lineman banned, but whatever, Ooh, it's a lineman. Yeah. That's what they're there for. Um, end of the first half, I had a chance to score, uh, fairly easily with a three plus reroll handoff. Of course I failed the three plus reroll handoff <laughs> and, uh, which is about 9% chance, which is my usual fail. If I ever have to reroll a three plus, it is not going to work. Uh, which sucks because I play lizard men and they have three plus dodges on the skinks and I always fail those. So may as well fail these two. Um, almost the exact same thing happened in the second half. All I needed was a three plus reroll to score. Uh, at that point, the score had been a big old zilcho zilcho. Um, he also had uh, hit the tripwire on his go for it to get a touchdown, rolled that one. Down he went. I think he hurt himself more uh, from his own falling down every time, which is the usual. Um, so that game ended 0-0, zero, zero, uh, tie. I had one casualty, he had zero casualties, and that was it. Uh, so, But that's still about 33 points, which is right in the middle of the road. Uh, went on to my second game, which was against uh, Skaven, and the rats off to you. Uh, he had a rat ogre, which uh, thankfully I was able to sort of distract. It wasn't able to do much damage especially in the later half of the game. He sort of just turned a lineman into a chew toy, but uh, the nice thing about armor nine is that chew toy is pretty tough. Uh, didn't get much casualty wise on him, especially for Skaven. He was bashing me pretty hard, uh, getting really good armor rolls and things like that. I wasn't able to knock really anyone out, but uh, ended up winning that one 1-0, one uh, getting myself... Uh, no real casualty bonus on that one either, but it still counted as a win. Um, but with that tie in the very beginning, I thought I was pretty much out of it in general, maybe like in the top third, top four, top five, something like that. Uh, went into the last match, which was... Uh, Slon. Frogs. Uh, with the, Fucking Slon. Yep. Uh, it's Matt's favorite team. They are Long Legs and Leap. 
Uh, Leap is usually like rough on agility unless you have like a high agility, which the frogs don't, but they have very long legs, which gets you a plus two. So basically you're just doing a straight edge roll. Three plus for the majority of his team, four plus on his catchers, uh, usually armor eight, a little bit armor seven. Uh, I was much better in the bashy category uh, against this guy. Downside was, uh, as soon as this game started, I received, he got a blitz, which uh, with against a team that leaps means they can just jump over and be right. like, I'm on the ball now. <laughs> Thankfully, the ball was back far enough where he wasn't able to fucking pick it up first thing. Um, what really sucked is that he was able to score on turn two after me receiving the fucking ball. What? <laughs> yeah. So basically, he leapt in, uh, tied everyone up. I hit what I could to try and get in there and I needed like a go for it, failed that. And then he was able to just run right over and score. Uh, so turn two, we're reset back up. He just scored one zero. Then we come back to uh, the setup again and he gets another fucking blitz on turn two. Jesus. <laughs> turn zero blitz, one, two blitz again. Uh, this time, uh, it didn't work out so well for him and I started smashing the shit out of him and basically the game went downhill for him that after that, I was able to keep some guys out. Um, the thing about Salon is they can leap on a three plus into any territory. It does uh, any square without having to worry about other tackle zones. And he has guys with leap who are able to leap into your cage, put guard on the ball carrier, and then you have someone else leap in there and smash the ball carrier, even though they're surrounded. Uh, so I definitely marked those as like, they need to go away forever. Uh, I was thankfully able to do that. So his guard was out. One of his catchers was out. So he only really had one score threat on me. And then I just kind of continued to smash bash. But the thing about leap is he just needs to stand up and just be like, and I'm hopping over here and kind of getting in my way. So I just kept bashing uh, until I scored. Um, he got some of his KOs back in, which I then sent right back out. <laughs> uh, and then I ended up scoring, uh, winning that one, 2-1. Uh, and I got three more casualties than he did, which gets you a casualty bonus um, winning. And so that, I was like, oh, I might be able to get something. I wasn't going to get casualty trophy because I had like four the whole four or five the whole tournament, which was pretty low for what I usually like, especially for how much I hit things. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised when I got second place at nice. the very end. Um as is tradition, someone left that was like, eh, I'm not going to win anything. And then they ended up winning a trophy. <laughs> yeah. Which which one? It was uh, Jeffy. It was the Jeffy. It was the last place trophy. But uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't really want to win that one. I mean, it's still like, it's usually like, hey, if you're not going to win last place, then you're just like, eh, just leave. Right, uh, yeah. But I mean, like, if you're going to win a trophy, you may as well just get the trophy. Um, So I got, uh, I got second place by... Four points. I was extremely close to first place. Uh, and the reason that was is the top table actually ended up tying. So whoever was originally at that top table, if anyone had won, they definitely would have probably whoever lost. Uh, I probably would have been maybe a, still, safe, yeah. a safe second. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to score these like what ifs. Like, oh, what if I had won my first table? I would have had three wins. Well, I wouldn't have played the second person I had played originally. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, but I was happy with my second place trophy. I had to hobble over my crutches, get my picture taken. <laughs> um, super nice trophies. Probably the nicest trophies we've had so far. Uh, kind well, of I'd hope so with the money, the extra money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like nice big trophies. Um, Ant got, you know, the usual uh, tournament dice, which we were like a red and yellow. Uh, okay. And then we've got some actual league dice that will be coming out uh, next month that everyone in the league is going to get. Cool. Yeah. Uh, overall productive tournament, second place, my second, my second, second place trophy. My first being the first KO tournament, uh, where I got second place. So it's now two second place KO bowl trophies on the shelf. Nice. Nice. Right on. I believe that concludes the bloody minute. Bloody 10 minutes. Yeah. Bloody <laughs> lots of minutes. Yes. Uh, which brings us over to some news and Kickstarters. For sure. First up, as usual, is news. First up at news, uh, we talked about it earlier, but not quite. Uh, Hanabi Deluxe is getting a reprint slash yeah. Kickstarter slash something. It's probably just a reprint. Just just a, a reprint. Or, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but, the, but they're calling it Hanabi Deluxe 2. Yes. Because it might have an ex. It has like a little six-tile expansion called Master Artisan. Yeah, which there's yeah. no details on 
It's just that it exists. <laughs> but I definitely know some people have been looking for a reprint of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember seeing it at Black and Red like three years ago. The tile one for like 30 or 25 bucks, however much it was. And I was like, I could get that. And I didn't. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. But from what it sounds like, it sounds like it's just easier with the tiles versus the cards. So yeah, it's it's easier to keep your information ordered. Sorted. Yeah. Because yeah. really, you have only like two ways with a card in your hand. You can flip it like upside down or right yeah. side up. And then and put it in, yeah. kind of in position like where it's in your hand, but it's a little bit more limited. And it's easier, you know, you're holding things in your hand. So occasionally you like, you know, want to set them down or do something like there's been times when I've had like my hand perfectly memorized like oh I gotta go to the bathroom and I set yeah. it down and I get back and I pick it up uh-huh. and then like stack it all together and spread it back out and go oh, <laughs> remember nothing um yeah so so it's it's not Hanabi 2 it's just here's another print of Hanabi yeah <laughs> maybe to make all those people feel good that have the first one like haha you don't have Hanabi Deluxe 1 only got Hanabi Duck Deluxe 2 that has more stuff in it, I guess. Uh, but, you know, the tiles are cool. We played, we like I said before, played with it in, at Geekway, and they're very nice. It's a nice box. Nice everything about it. Yeah. So definitely a cool thing to own. Indeed. Because it was, what, six years ago that that first Deluxe Edition came out? Yep. Uh, next up in news, uh, Love Letter is getting a new edition from Z-Man. Because it went... To Z Man recently, is that right? Yes, that is correct. I think we talked about that a couple months ago. Yes, and now here's the official like this is now the love letter of Z Man. Yep. Uh, so they're changing a little bit about it. Uh, most notably, they are changing uh the art and uh some of the layout. I think I can't remember. It's been a while since I played Coup, but I feel like they've you changed. because we're not talking about Coup. Yeah. God damn it, love letter. I mean, it has been a while since we've played Coup. But. It's been a lo- it's been longer since I've played Coup than it has Love Letter, but I have not played Love Letter in a while. But I don't remember the text being quite positioned like it is. But I could be mistaken. I don't know. You are mistaken. Okay. Yeah, it was in the, it was on the bottom. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It seems like the layout's a little bit different from what it used to be, but maybe not. Anyway, uh, the biggest thing, yeah, the art change. Uh, they are also uh, adding two new characters. Uh, so there will be 21 character cards, uh, six reference cards, 13 tokens, and now instead of two to four players, it will play two to six players. I'm going to assume it's incorporating uh, parts of the deluxe edition yep. that they got from way back when. Uh, and also instead of cubes, it has actual um, tokens. tokens. So Or gems or whatever they use. That depends on yeah. whatever edition, yeah. I guess. Yeah, the Adventure Time used gems and yeah. stuff like that, but yeah. I think the Adventure Time version is the one I've played the most which is weird. <laughs> I've definitely only played actual love letter. I've not played any of the like gotcha licensed. Uh, I don't. Versions. Yeah, I don't know if the priests like because the one interesting thing I thought that love letter uh, the Adventure Time one added was that the different barons and uh, princes and stuff had different artwork on them except for the guard. So if you saw a baron and then you saw them play another baron, you know that they still had that first one. I don't know if this one's going to include that or not. Probably mm-hmm. not. But uh, art looks good on this. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not as thrilled as like I don't like the guards. Something in the face looks off. Uh, Prince, Baron, Handmaid all look good though for ones that I can readily see here in the main article without clicking on the images. Yep. So yeah, only twelve bucks too. So if you're looking to uh, grab a copy of copy of Love Letter, yeah, I might. I don't. I might. I might end up grabbing this one again because I. I don't. My old. My regular Love Letter. I don't even know what happened to that. But my Adventure Time. It's like eh, it's still fine. But Playing up to six players is always good, and it's it's one I still enjoy. So it's a nice pocket game. Yes. Next up in news, uh, the people behind Dungeons and Dragons thought that that Stranger Things thing was pretty cool because it had Dungeons and Dragons in it. So they're making a D and D Stranger Things starter set. Yeah. Uh. So the starter set's been a thing for a while. Uh. That's basically just a the red box from Second Edition. I mean, well, that, that's, I mean, what it's, that's what it's from. Yeah, yeah, this one. yeah. Well, so that, well, that's what this one's like. Design is based off of well, the and old red box. They've re-released that red box for fourth edition. Yeah, that looked like second edition, which I bought because I was like, "That's cool," and then I was like, "This game sucks." Yeah, fourth edition, <laughs> nah. Uh, and because but I'm, it takes place in the '80s, right? Yes. Stranger Things. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Hence, um, the, hence the second edition. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I figured. Yeah. yeah. And thus, like, it having, like, pre-distressed look to it and everything. Yeah. Uh, But the 5th edition starter set has been around for a long time, too, and it's basically just a box that has a short little campaign, some pre-made character sheets, 
like one set of dice, like just the bare minimum you need to like get together and try D and D to see if it's yeah. worth investing the hundreds of dollars in the actual books and yes, dice is, and but, minis and all. But of I that. was talking about that fourth edition one. They've sort of just kept that along. Yeah, the red box. Yeah, they just keep doing it for new editions. Um, so here's a new new. Yes. Yeah, so, but, but it's not fantasy. No, it's, it's like Stranger Things. It's like Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. So the K- kids on bikes. Yeah. <laughs> so the characters are inspired from the show, uh, but it, it says the book includes a full version of Hunt for the Thessal Hydra, which was the adventure they were playing at the very start of Stranger Things. Yeah, ah. which is an actual fantasy one. So I don't know, like maybe have- they've made one where they're like Will would be a wizard. And maybe it was so the, and so the, ca- the characters that they were playing on it, something so. like that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, there's not a ton of information in this article about what exactly is in it. Uh, the coolest thing in it, though, is that it's coming with two of the Demogorgon minis uh, from Stranger Things, one pre painted and then one not painted in case you want to paint your own Demogorgon. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, which, since I think the Demogorgon is one of the coolest sci fi beasts to come out recently, that's pretty sweet. And I think this announcement came along with the summer premiere announcement of the third season. Yeah. Yeah. But now I saw it and I was like, oh, look at that. That's two things I'm not interested in. <laughs> um, I want to so, see what Steve's up to. Yeah. Uh, 25 bucks for the Stranger Things version, uh, whereas it's about 20 bucks ish for the regular starter set. So yeah. it's a little bit more expensive, but the regular starter set I don't think comes with any minis. Yeah. Uh, so that's really what pushes that extra. Couple it's like two fifty a mini. That's a good deal. Yeah, that's no GW prices, well, especially for good minis. No, no it's not. <laughs> but uh, I don't know how good that qual- mini quality is going to be. I mean, I, I bet I, 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 look uh, that the one they have in the article looks like it might be an actual photo we all, of the actual. It looks print. better in betrayal though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll see what the final product looks like because I never trust those pictures. They always end right. up looking like trash. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I'm a little curious about the campaign in it and the pre-made characters and how they went about doing that, basing them off Stranger Things, but setting them in that old Thessal Hydra setting. Except putting, like, the mo- like the Stranger Things kid on the front. Like, where's where's the campaign? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, but yes, it, uh, Stranger Things is part of a long line of stuff that has been, like, D&D is invading the mainstream again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I can't wait until the next panic of it stealing our children's souls. Satan worshippers. Yeah. Hooray, moral panic for no fucking reason at all. Yep. Um, but yeah. It'll come back around to video games sooner or later. Oh, yes, of course. It always does. Or Pac-Man fever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up in news. Next up in news, uh, WizKids is announcing a, uh, an English language rev- version of Hako Ona, a Japanese horror game, which is a, sounds like a bullsh- bullshit atmospheric dexterity game. <laughs> You're not too far off. Yeah, so uh, in this, uh, you play uh, one person who is the Hakaona, uh, the box woman uh, haunting the house. Everybody else are visitors who are trapped in the house with the spirit and have to either escape or defeat it. Uh, you build the house randomly via connecting room tiles. But yeah, so you're, you're going around gathering items and everything to either aid in your escape or aid in fighting the Hakaona. Meanwhile, it will be traveling around the house as well. Uh, and if it encounters you, you are immediately killed, uh, and you become a uh, Hakobito, uh, a servant of the Haka Ono. Um, yeah. So you, the the dexterity side of it sounds pretty awesome. So basically, it go, it lives in a box, so it can't see or anything. It just hunts by sound. And so on your turn, you have to stack noise discs, and so it gets taller and taller and taller. And then uh, if it ever collapses or if there's a fifth disc placed on it, then it awakens and immediately takes a turn, the Hakaona. Uh, so you can kind of secretly move around if you're the Hakaona uh, and pretend to be different objects in the house until, like, sound pops up. Oh, I get a free move now, and I'm in the same room as you. You're now dead. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. Um, the way the tiles and different items and stuff are set up. Yeah. Um, Very Japanese. Yes, so it's a few years old. It came out originally in 2016 in Japan, uh, but now finally coming over to the States, uh, translated for all of our gaming awesomeness. Yeah, it seemed like the original version did have some English for like the room names and stuff, but gotcha. Uh, everything else is very Japanese language. Yeah. Like the lumber room, you know, that classic room of every Japanese house. 
Yeah, that sure. has the lumber in it. Sure. Yeah. Or the red room. <laughs> uh, and that's it for news. Indeed. No more news. Which brings us to Kickstarters this week, which there are a handful, uh, starting with uh, In the Hall of the Mountain King. Uh, very well funded, uh, almost $120,000 of its $30,000 goal. Uh, 1,900 backers, but just about a week left to pledge this one, which you can, uh, at its most popular level for the deluxe version, for 67 whole dollars. First thing that came to my mind when I saw the board for this was Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of, and even the gameplay sounds vaguely like multiplayer Dwarf Fortress, uh, although you can actually understand what the fuck is happening in yes, this one. Yes, yes. Uh, it's not just a bunch of uh, ASCII characters. Looks cool, though. Uh, so this is a territory denial cascading production game for two to five people. Um, takes about 90 minutes uh, to play. And essentially, you are all different uh, trolls that are returning to your mountain home. You'd been, like, chased out, and then it collapsed in fell all apart, and now that it's all collapsed and everything, you're going to reclaim it. And so on your turn, you are going to be recruiting other trolls to work with you, uh, mining out rooms, building workshops, converting resources, and things like that with the ultimate goal of earning the most points and becoming the troll to, like, take over the kingdom of the mountain. Um, So you, uh, on your turn, you can optionally, at the start of your turn, cast one spell or activate one workshop. Uh, So workshops are just little tiles that convert one resource into another and vice versa, like back and forth. So you convert resources with a workshop, uh, and you can also use rune crystals to activate spells. Uh, Once any given spell is activated three times, it goes away and new spells come out. After you've done that, you can recruit one troll or dig one tunnel. Recruiting trolls is kind of an interesting thing they have set up. There's like uh, three tiers of trolls based on like what kind of resources they provide and what they can do. And you stack them like a pyramid, both in the uh, available pile of them and in your player area. And so to take a card from the buy area, you pay one coin to every troll cascading down underneath of it. So if you take from the top of the pyramid, it's going to cascade down and you have to pay the whole bottom of the pyramid, uh, one coin on each one of them. Uh, And then when you move it over and place it in your kingdom, it activates its ability, and then it activates the ability of every troll under it uh, to get a resource that's on their card that they don't already have. So, like, if one of them has, like, they've got, like, these little axes and then, like, gold coins and and coal blocks. So, say you've got two gray blocks and one gold token uh, on your card, and you have one of the gray blocks. When that card gets activated, you get another gray block and another, like, gold coin kind of thing. But it seems like kind of an interesting thing. I can see where they they call it uh, like cascading whatever because like you're going to just – the bigger your pyramid gets, the more placing one guy on top is just going to give you a flood of resources. Uh, so there's probably quite a major ramp up in this game. Yeah. Um, deluxe, but, the, the deluxe edition comes with game trays and a bunch of upgrades and metal coins and it's well worth the extra $19 for what they seem to upgrade here. Yeah. Uh, cause it's just all, you know, the usual cardboard coins and stuff like that. Yes. Um, digging tunnels back in the rules portion of things, uh, use polyominoes, polyominoes to dig tunnels if you choose to do that. And then optionally, if you've got a, and then you like move statues and do some other things that are all optional moves that score you additional points. Uh, bunch of videos on there for how to play in depth. But. The game trays seem to help, uh, significantly organize how to, uh, yeah. play the game. <laughs> yeah. Anything that has a bunch of polyominoes, having some kind of custom insert to hold them all. Or even just uh, a board nice. to keep track of everything, like uh, a barren park. Yes. as a nice, just somewhere to keep everything. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to see, especially after we did our components and we're trying to think of like functional inserts, it's good to see more and more inserts that are actually being very functional. Unlike barren parks. <laughs> Unlike barren parks. <laughs> Stupid, weird triangle insert. Yeah. Oh, Whatever. yeah. Ugh. Uh, but yeah, that's In the Hall of the Mountain King. Go check that out if it sounds interesting to you. Next up in Kickstarter is 1001 Odysseys. Uh, another well-funded 117000 of its $50,000 goal, 1,500 backers, uh, but just only about a week left to pledge for this one, which you can for a whole $75. So 1001 Odysseys is a uh, 
cooperative, collaborative kind of story-ish game. Gives me kind of a uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights vibe. Uh, plays one to four players, 30 to 60 minutes per chapter, and there are multiple chapters, uh, over 30 chapters of content, they say, uh, to play. And essentially, you take on one of four roles, uh, split up depending on how many players there are, but there's the commander, uh, who is, has the final say on any decisions if the crew is divided. Uh, the You also are in charge of leading discussions about options, assigning storybook passages to members of your crew, and ensuring that everyone reads with feeling. Uh, the navigator uh, who guides you through the different worlds of Insula, the world that this all takes place in. Uh, every move that the crew makes, you mark down. Uh, every choice that they make, you mark down. Uh, you reveal new locations, research local coordinates, and uh, look over the map and stuff for hints and things to give to other players. Uh, then if you work in information, uh, you are going to be the, the keeping track of everything and everyone your crew has uncovered uh, with the handy passport, which is like a little notepad that makes it easy to track what you've been doing in each of the different missions. Um, it helps get you back up to speed when you come back from having saved and, and taken a break. Uh, and then the operations is the last one, and the operations officer uh, is in charge of coming up with strategies for getting goals and advancing missions. Uh, they run the mission control board, unlocking new actions and keeping track of progress, and keeping an eye out for codes that show up on the board uh, that will tell the rest of the crew uh, when something new happens. So uh, you can do all of that by yourself in a solo game, or you can team up with four players and everybody take on a different role. Um it seems like you're getting different actions, missions, and I guess locations, lo locations yeah. and then they'll have various icons on them that will go back to a guide of some sort that will read a section from, depending on what those bits were interacting with each other and your choices and such. Yeah. Which un add new locations and stuff to the map. And yeah, you so you end up building kind of like a little card-based map yeah. that you can use to move around, and in different areas you can do different things and get resources and whatnot, so... Yeah, it's a cool little way to do that. Yeah. Seems like it's going to come with some pretty thick storybooks. Which is always good. Yeah, like four different storybooks from here, uh, seems like. I just hope that it's not, like it, like you were saying in the beginning, that it's Tales of the Arabian Nights-esque. That I hope it's not Tales of the Arabian Nights-esque like uh, in, near, in, near and Far was, or the Above and Below was, where it seems like that one put too big, a, for me at least, put too big a focus on the game and the story suffered because of it. Ah, I just hope it has a coherent -ish yes. story. Well, that's <laughs> unlike tales. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> Not that I don't like tales, uh -huh. but it's nice telling a story. Yeah. Yeah, we all know the building's on fire, lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite things uh, about this is definitely the art. Uh, the yeah, art is nice fucking amazing. It's a. It's kind of like a weird fantasy sci-fi kind of look to yeah. it. Yeah. With like, like really cool watercolor style, uh, that I'm I'm very di very much digging. Yeah, like talking turnips or something. Yeah, <laughs> a Nebel Wuber. Was that the name? No, that's just one later on. Like further down, there's an almanac that you can get with one of the pledges, and like they show a page from it, and it shows the Nebel Wuber Wuber and the Plumplin. Plumplim. Plumplim. Yeah. Yeah. Almanac was cool. So. Yeah. Um. It looks neat. Yeah. Uh, there is a higher pledge pledge level, uh, but it just comes with the plushie, the pin, and then like a refresh pack. So I assume the refresh pack sort of just lets you play through stuff again. Maybe there's some yeah. legacy style. I mean, it's probably just campaign esque. So yeah, wow. And if you play one path through the story booklet, they say it's only about thirty percent content. You can go back and play again, and it's like a new game plus in a lot of video games where like it affects like different people show up and different things happen. So it's like a slightly different oh, that's cool. replay. Uh, yeah. New missions, strange locations, whole new chapters that you haven't even played yet. Oh, the, the ref refresh pack is just basically new like character sheets. So you can track stuff again. Oh, gotcha. Cool. And if you want an art canvas print, it's only 250 bucks. That's it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thousand one odysseys. Uh, next up is, Mechanica, uh, just funded forty five thousand of its forty thousand dollar goal. Eight hundred and thirty, uh, eight hundred and sixty three backers, and just under two weeks left to pledge this one, which you can for thirty nine dollars. Speaking of another game with a good style, 
Yeah, really love the art style for this one. Uh, so Mechanica is a game for one to four players. Takes about 60 minutes. Uh, all nice kind of shorter games this week. Um, it's about vacuum robots. Yeah, it's an engine building <laughs> game where you're racing to create the best vacuum robot factory out of interlocking puzzle pieces. Uh, so turns are super simple in this one. Um, at the start of the round, uh, everybody moves tidy bots through your factory, uh, stopping in most puzzle shaped improvements and, uh, get upgrades or multiply. Uh, then on your turn, you do four things. Uh, you ship bots from your trucks that have made it all the way through your factory to the trucks. You ship them out to get money. Uh, then you use that money to buy more improvements, which are more puzzle pieces that go into your factory, uh, which further upgrade and like change the robots that you make each round. And then you put new bots into fabricators for next turn. And then the final step is to rotate the shop wheel, which this is one of the coolest things about this game. Yeah. Is it's got this little shop wheel that as you rotate it, it's got a hole in part of it where the parts will fall down into. It's the recycler. And you get rewards if something falls into the recycler. So one of the key things they talk about in this campaign is that, that this is a game you just you literally play out of the box. Like so you just open it up and start playing. Like you hand out a couple of player boards and things and then go most everything. It's another one. It's not game trays for this one. I couldn't find a name of who did their insert, but it's another insert that you is fully functioning for organizing it to put away and also play right out of, which seems pretty freaking cool. Yeah. They've got nice gifts of all of the stuff working in the game, uh, yep. specifically the tray. Yep. And it's got, you know, nice two layer player boards, which are always great, especially because the pieces here are puzzle pieces, so it just, you go right on Well, they, they might have two-layer player boards. It is not currently unlocked. Oh, it's not unlocked. Yeah, it, it is one of the stretch goals. Uh, it's the second stretch goal. They just funded, so maybe in another 10K, we might get those. Yeah. Uh, two-layer factory boards, and then they've got some, like, mini expansions and stuff lined up. Uh, kind of small aside that I noticed with both 1001 Odysseys and with this one, uh, I was scrolling, like, they have, like, the meet the team at the bottom, and, like, 1001 Odysseys is almost all women. Yeah. Which and this always... one I was noticing is, like, a ton of women as well. And down at the bottom, Resonim, the company behind it, is a woman-led game publishing group committed to making artistic, engaging, and socially conscious games with a focus on representing women in games. That's fucking awesome. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> love to see more of that. I wonder if we've talked about their... Did we talk about the Buffalo name-dropping game at some point? I was looking. I don't, I don't remember talking about any of the four that they mentioned. Visitor mm -hmm. in Blackwood Grove, Monarch... Buffalo or Awkward Moment and Awkward Moment at Work. Mm. So I do not know. Maybe they haven't done on Kickstarter before. Uh, they've Monarch done, and Visitor the, and Blackwood yeah. were their only uh, other two on Kickstarter. Okay. That's why they have the little Kickstarter K next to their names. And that they said they've done three kicks. This will be their third Kickstarter. Gotcha. Correct. So, um, yeah, love in the art style. That whole play right out of the box thing is pretty great. Uh, it seems like a good deal, too. Yeah. 39 bucks. They have a special pledge for Australia, exactly the same as the Mechanica tier, but with better shipping to Australia. So they're trying not to fuck the Australians over too much. Yeah. I guess that's good. I guess. Australians are all right. Fuck the Australians. <laughs> <laughs> I had Jeff said that, not us. It's Jeff's job to talk shit about everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Almost literally. Yeah. <laughs> but that's Mechanica, so go check it out. Next got up. A little, yeah. Got a little high pitch there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what happened. Next up on Kickstarter is Dino Meeple upgrades for dinosaur related board games uh, <laughs> by Meeple Source. Uh, well funded, 39,000 of its $24,000 goal, 284 backers, and just over a week left to pledge this one, which all of the insane people, the majority of the insane people, have pledged $178 for all of these dinosaur meeples. They just really want wooden dinosaur meeples. Because Dinosaur Island and... Dinogenics. No, Dinogenics. Dinogenics, did that have wood? Yes. Okay. The, the Dinogenics ones are wood, but they're not like screen printed like these are. Well, yes. The, but the Dinosaur Island ones are plastic, which I know annoyed God, some people. I fucking hate it. So now you can pay a hundred... I, I did not like the plastic dinosaurs. Well, now you can pay $178 and get screen printed custom meeples for every type of dinosaur in Dinosaur Island and... The expansion called Totally Liquid. Totally Liquid. Yeah. 
Uh, this is definitely designed like in conjunction with Dinosaur Island. Uh, you know, it's the Dino Meeple upgrade for Dinosaur Island. They use the art style that's on the tiles for Dinosaur Island to design how they were going to paint the wood minis, uh, the meeples, Dino Meeples. So uh, it matches very closely with the art style there. Um, yeah, it's a uh, bunch of stuff. You know, giant freaking Mega Rex that's huge. Which is like a $5 add-on just to get by itself. Yeah. But they'll have that neat color of Dinosaur Island, so they sort yeah. of match whatever. I think they sort of match whatever the color is on the cards. I think that's where they pulled most of the art style from. Yeah, I that, believe so. That's what he was saying. Literally just said that. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's now not you know, in the, now you know how it feels, Adrian. <laughs> it's not in the not it's not in the style of, but they actually pulled from the yes, cards. Yes, they clearly worked with them to make sure that uh, these things all matched. But they did not work with Dinogenics because you no. can just you can buy all of the meeples for Dinogenics, but they just are the Dinosaur Island ones. Yeah, they're just the if diff- you do, if you don't have uh, Dinosaur Island or if you are um, if you already have <laughs> Dinosaur the, the if you already pledged for the full Dinosaur Island and you're like I also have Dinogenics, but you need six dinosaurs in that one versus the four for this one, so you could buy the partial set, but then you'd have to keep moving them in between the set. So maybe just if you're already <laughs> <laughs> Almost two hundred dollars in. You might as well just spend forty five dollars and just Jesus. Get, yeah. yeah, that's so many. Uh, or you can just get the goats or something, or the petting zoo dinos. <laughs> what are the petting zoo dinos? I assume it's from the new one, from the expansion. Yeah, they're babies. Yeah, yeah. Is that a mechanic in the new yes. expansion? Okay, with all the water dinos. Yep, I see. Oh man, I didn't see that they had a wingspan resource kit too. Well, those are just. Stuff you can get from the website. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah that's that's just, just showing that. off their past stuff. They've done these Kickstarters for little bits yeah. and things mm-hmm. like that like over, the, over the years. The Indonesia one. Yeah, that Paul has. They're real nice. I didn't know Paul had it. Yep. Huh. It's real nice. God, I want to play Indonesia. Code names. <laughs> yeah, code name meeples. Uh, yeah, Meeple Source has always done good work, so I have no doubt that these will all be good quality, but yeah. they, man, are they expensive. As per usual. Yeah, especially for Dinogenics that maybe maybe or Dinosaur Island, mm. where maybe Dinogenics might be a better dinosaur game. That review will be coming sometime in the near future. Indeed. That wraps up Kickstarters, though. Yeah, that's it. All done. Ended up on a sweet, sweet dinosaur level. Yep. <laughs> that we did. Well, that brings us over to the listener feedback portion of the show. Uh, Jeff, you had some emails. Indeed, I did. Two emails, in fact. Uh, emails at milehighgameguys.com if you would like to send us an email. And I'm just going to point out, if you send us an email and we don't read it on air, get a hold of us. Or if we don't read it on air or respond to you. In some way, shape, or form, get a hold of us. Because Chris, one of our oldest listeners, Mm -hmm. oldest emailers, (laughs) like... One of the first people to ever send us an email and actually interact with us messaged us on Twitter like a couple days ago and was like, dude, I sent you guys like two emails. Yeah, like, sorry what if I shit? made you upset or something like yeah, that. Did, and we're did like, I piss you off? Oh, what? No, and, we didn't get them. And we just never got them. And yep. so he had to uh, resend everything. So it's emails at milehighgameguys.com. I mean, he sent us stuff before. He had the right email address. Well, so clearly, I don't know what was so, happening. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you had our. Zach's correct email address, except so screwed you, that up. Yeah, huh? he did. <laughs> I was reading it. It's different. <laughs> or no, I was typing it into a web page. Whatever. Anyway, the email begins. Let's try this again. Hey, guys who game at a height of one mile. I'm a couple of episodes behind and just heard Jeff talking about wanting to go snowboarding. <laughs> and I was like shouting out of my phone, no, Jeff, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you recover soon. I, I will recover at the speed that it takes to recover, which is another three weeks of crutches and then yeah. another six to nine months of full recovery. Yeah. Just do it faster. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeff, quick every question. T- every time someone says, I hope you recover soon, be like, no, it's just, that doesn't help. Yeah. It's not helping me recover soon. I'm not going to. What What if you were able to go back in time and be like, Jeff, if you go snowboarding, you're going to break your leg. So stop yourself from doing it. But it meant the next time you went snowboarding, you were going to break your leg. Mm. <laughs> so basically, either you break your leg and then you can continue snowboarding or you just never snowboard again. Yeah. Hmm. I'd probably prefer not to break my leg. Okay. You would give up snowboarding to have never broken your leg. Yeah. 
Yes. I, I guarantee you, if somebody told me that the next time I went snowboarding, I was going to break my leg, I would just plan to break my leg, go break my leg, and go with the healing and go back. Snowboarding is one of the single most enjoyable things in the world for me. I would not recommend breaking your leg like I did. I mean, you know, I would try <laughs> to break it in as easy of a way. I don't know. What? Anyway, yeah, no. You, for you, you, for you, Adrian, it'd be like you would break both your legs and you would have a lasting <laughs> injury. You'd be crippled. You'd for the be rest crippled. Of your life. Yeah, but you could still snowboard. But you could still <laughs> snowboard. Yeah, I mean, it would depend entirely on how much the crippling injury affected the snowboarding. Yeah. Well, obviously, if, if you came back in time just to say that and disappeared, you're not going to know until you. I mean, <laughs> there's a way to find out. <laughs> Anyway, continue the email. Yes. I've been a loyal listener since very early and wanted to do something to support you for all the weeks of awesome podcasts. All the years of awesome podcasts. Well, I mean, year, years weeks. is just a bunch of weeks, so. <laughs> Jesus. Not wrong. You, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not at all. I had this artwork commissioned for you by a local Sacramento artist, Hannah McFadden. Sacramento it's... represent. I was born outside of it. So. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I only I left when I was four, so all I remember is chicken pox. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a three color design and should be able to scale up or down. You have full rights to this image to use in whatever way you would like, or you can chuck it in the garbage. But if you use it, please try to give a shout out to Hannah. I can get you a high resolution image or in different formats if you would like. Just let me know. Hope you like it. It's a little inside baseball, and I thought floor, a floor slapping emu was appropriate. Still checking the mail each day for those dice you are sending me, Chris. Keep checking. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. Shocker, Adrian. Adrian forgetting something weird. Never. Uh, <laughs> we'll definitely post this. Very spacey person. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely post this image for everyone to hear by the time that you I, have this. I feel in your like ear this holes. should be for at. At least this Wednesday's episode, this should be the thumbnail on all of the social media posts. I'm okay with that. Just make sure to add Gray Fox, sponsored by Gray Fox Games. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, next up in email is Lance. Uh, nice word. Adrian, nice and appropriate use of the under wor- underused word pentultim- penultimate. Uh, In the top 10 components episode, I also liked the different take and point of view on board games. Keep up the great work. Ciao. Yeah. Penultimate is uh, a good word. Personal favorite of mine. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because a lot of people don't realize that it means the one right before the last one. Yep. Yes. Uh, I I, I asked Andrew, what is the one that's right before the penultimate? I forget what he said. I don't know. I don't think I was there for it. He's not there for that. Okay. Well, I asked. I was like. Or penultimate, and then I asked him what the one before penultimate was. It's like anti penultimate or something like that. Huh. Yes, that's what it was. I remember I was talking with Wes because we we're like antebellum, and then we we're like because that's uh, before the war. Yeah, but it's we were like yeah, so it's antebellum. It's before the bellum, and then we had a whole line of jokes of like anti penultimate. Yeah, and then it's like post bellum after the bellum by bellum, so it's like a halfway through bellum or every other two like every other bellum and shit like that. It was. It was Wes would appreciate it, but he doesn't listen anymore. So Aww. he'll be on the show, but he doesn't yeah. listen. No, I did just look it up, and yeah, penultimate is next to last pen prefix from pen a almost. The anti penultimate is the one before that, and that's a n t e. By the way, not uh, not anti. Okay, yeah. Uh, and now we have bonus email. Uh, real quick before the bonus email, which I'm very curious about because I didn't know there was a bonus email. Well, you didn't until now when I said there was a bonus email. I know. Uh, and now you're ruining it. One of my favorite things uh, that I saw recently was somebody who had made a tweet where it was talking about like English being a hard lang- language to learn. And, like that's because English isn't a language. English is three languages dressed in a trench coat passing as one. <laughs> I was like, that's appropriate. Uh, it's the Vincent Adultman of, <laughs> uh, of languages. Yes. Bonus email time. Bonus email. This one's from Jeff because he listened to those old episodes and has some corrections. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We never saw an email, so I feel no, like... No, I, I wrote it all in notes so you wouldn't see it. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, wait. I, first, we have to revel in the fact that Jeff actually <laughs> listened to an episode. It's been two weeks, and your driveway was still icy. icy. Clearly, you haven't bought that shovel yet. That's I true. Did, I did. It's sitting right <laughs> outside the front stoop. You haven't used it, that's for sure. I have, and I used salt. It's just that fucking icy. <laughs> I used, well, like, you didn't five use pounds it, of salt. You didn't use it two weeks ago when I came. That's true. Yeah. That's when I had written this. 
Uh, because that was now a month ago at this yeah. point where, and yeah, whatever. Whatever amount of time it was, the Monday after when I broke my leg. Uh, it was a 30-minute demo of Resident Evil 2 remake, not an hour demo of Resident Evil 2 yes. remake. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, and then you were talking about the Resident Evil 1 remake and how it wasn't that great. Uh, the first Resident Evil remake was originally a 2004 GameCube release. Then they re-released it for PS3, PS4, PC, 360, and Xbox One. This was an alternate control scheme uh, offered from the tank controls. You could do 3D controls or tank controls. You were complaining about tank controls in that Resident Evil remake. Uh, but you could turn it to regular 3D controls. I, I tried both. They both still sucked. It was not great. Uh, but that was an HD remake of the remake from 2004. Yes. So that's why it was not as good as the Resident Evil 2 one, which was a straight-up yes. modern yes. remake. That old one was basically a game from 2004. Yes, yeah. which I learned after the fact. Like, when I was like, wait, why was this so shitty and Resident Evil... And I did all the research. Because it was literally a GameCube game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and then... Uh, Quacks, which I did not talk about mm -hmm. uh, because you talked about it uh, already. My that was a nightmare game of Quacks. Uh, my spoils and Quacks were the you ultimate. Could, you could not spoil. <laughs> Starting from a one in six chance to spoil, then one in fifteen chances to spoil, and then with them happening every round. Uh, and also emails feed me uh, being nice or mean, so send them anyways. That's that. There we go. Nice secret email, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Also, congrats on listening to your first episodes of Mile High Game Guys ever. Yeah. <laughs> How was it listening as a fan? <laughs> it was fine. Well, I, so I can't I, even say the word I, fan as seriously. It was fine. I got, to, I got to hear other people talk instead of myself. There yeah. you go. I didn't know what happened. Yeah. I, I had to listen to it and not know. We would not tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, continuing on in the listener feedback section of the show... Uh, we have a couple different things. Uh, we'll start over here in YouTube with Paulo's Corner uh, from episode 129, the Europe area. Uh, <laughs> that was Wes's episode, I yes. believe. Yes. Uh, Paulo says, congrats on the new job. Wishes of much success on it. The Super Bowl. How, how's, that, how's, that, how's that new job going? Not great. <laughs> Not great. It, it, oh, yeah, it has smoothed out. I made it through like the... 48 to 72 hours of holy fuck I want to rage quit this job and now I've like kind of fallen into a rhythm and uh it's, you've accepted it yeah yeah I mean you know essentially you know there's like that initial like tensing up and then it's like no this is just this is what's happening I'm just gonna deal with it um <laughs> uh he continues uh yes yeah, so the job sucks uh continues the Super Bowl was so boring yes yes it was uh, I don't understand why Americans complain about real football being boring. Uh, for the exact same reasons, it's three hours and nothing fucking happens. <laughs> 90 minutes. Yes, that is the best thing that quote-unquote real football, a.k.a. soccer, has going for it, is that it's done in 90 minutes instead of four hours. So, uh, I like watching American football, but it isn't as exciting as you guys try to make it. Uh to be fair, I totally understand everybody who doesn't like American football, especially like if you don't know some of the more intricacies of football. Like, I can understand how it's so boring to watch. Like, they're just standing around again. It's like, yeah, but like, you see how they're starting to line up? Like, that means they're going to run this play, maybe. Or I feel all those things you just said could be said about soccer as soccer well. Totally. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's the thing like, whatever you're more familiar with, you're going to understand the intricacies, which make it more interesting to yes. watch. Um,. You have to correct the description of the video. It's Aaliyah, not Alay. Uh, just one is an amazing word party game. It's so simple, but so engaging. Probably the best party game of last year. I have been really enjoying just one uh, yes, when we've been here. playing it. Uh, I like that it is just like a cooperative word party game. Real good. Uh, Paulo continues in a different comment on the... Maha Game Guys discuss Growing Pains in the Hobby episode. This was a very interesting episode. Really liked it. Had some stuff to say about it, but I'm tired and don't have the energy right now. I, I like that he sent us something to be like, I wanted to say something, but I don't feel like it anymore. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then he never sent us anything else. Yep. Uh, and then commenting again, Paulo over on Paulo's Corner, commenting on the top 10 components list. Uh, just putting things here as you talk about the components. Not necessarily the best ones, but the ones that come to my mind. 
and I don't care if they are deluxe or Kickstarter. Bored. Tricarion, uh, <clears throat> the Pillars of the Earth, Zulkin that I mentioned in my response on BGG, Euphoria, Modular Boards. Agree with Adrian, Vanuatu, and also good mention to Archipelago and Keeper. Player Boards, Lisboa slash Outlive Deluxe Edition, amazing player boards. Dinogenics, also great. Glass Road, Factory Player Boards, best cards, no opinion, or best cards, no opinion. Best minis, not a minis, not a big minis guy. Uh, from what I've played and used, Blood Rage. Best inserts, Dice Forge, Lisboa slash Vinos Deluxe slash The Gallerist, Outlive Deluxe, Wasteland Express Delivery Service, The Grizzled Armistice Edition. Uh, yeah, a lot of good games there. I did want to mention like Lisboa or uh, Gallerist in mind because Gallerist I think is the best of the three for their insert, but... Um, Best Money, Millennium Blades, uh, Iron Clays from Brass. Yep, agree with both. Best Cardboard Bits, The Gallerist. Best Resources, Scythe, Smurg, Euphoria. Uh, best Miscellaneous, Luchador Ring slash Colt Express Train slash Stone Garden Pieces. Great Lists and Show Guys. Whew, that was a long one. Yes, it was. You basically just got a whole nother addendum of the list. Which there. didn't follow any of the rules, but... It's fine. I mean, my list didn't either. Let's be honest. Yeah, no, yeah, both. I would say three of the ten. Yeah. What was funny too is that I missed the very first one you did of Nog in the Nog yeah. until until because normally I don't edit the Friday episodes, and then Adrian was like, "Hey, I need you. Can you edit the Friday episode? I've been stuck on the uh, Mile High Dungeon Delvers one." I was like, "Okay," and as soon as I started listening, I was like, "Wait a Wait, second, what the shit!" Not, so I just sent him a message at like midnight that I was like, "Adrian." Nog in the Nog is, is you can't buy that game right now. <laughs> Oops. Yep. Uh, there were guidelines. There were guidelines. Or rules. Or rules. Yeah. Uh, then, so that wraps up all of the Paulo's Corner YouTube responses. But jumping over to Twitter, uh, Scott, our friend of the show who is unfortunately uh, corrupted by living in New England and actually likes the Patriots, <laughs> uh, says uh, in regards to the top 10 episode, it was a fun episode. Some of my favorite components in no particular order, the bags in Orléans, the money and chunky bits in Raccoon Tycoon, stockpile money, the cardboard pieces in Pioneer Days, Camel Up, uh, Camel Up's Pyramid, Zia components, Scoville Peppers. Uh, I am not familiar with a bunch of those that I would like to actually play. I want to play Raccoon Tycoon. I really want to play yeah. Scoville. Yeah, uh, I have no interest in Camel Up, but it does look good when I see people playing it. Not wrong. So, yeah. Uh, and there was nothing over on BGG, correct, Zach? That is correct. Awesome. That then concludes listener feedback. Uh, well, the listener feedback is done. If you would like to send us feedback. Well, I do have a promise oh. for, uh, I believe it's, it's Dan Dan Wyatt from MFG Cast. Yes. Yes. Uh, he sent me a copy of The Expanse uh, as a get well present. Yep. Uh, especially because I have been talking about that show a lot on the show. Mm -hmm. Or yes, that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> also on the Slack. <laughs> yes. Also awesome. on the Slack. Um. So I offered to help pay for it, and he was like, "No, just shred me like a one dollar Kickstarter bitch." Okay. Uh. So uh, Danimal. Um. You should take a break from Twitter. I know you're on there a lot. There is more to life than wrestling gifts. Um, <laughs> I do appreciate a good wrestling gif, but maybe maybe just tamp, tamp the, tap the brakes a little bit. Gear down, big shifter? Yeah. <laughs> you, couldn't probably, you couldn't find an appropriate wrestling uh, <laughs> phrase that would match that. <laughs> Hmm, I'm, sh I'm positive there is one, but nothing comes to my brain currently because mm. I've tried to push all of the wrestling stuff away. Right. Uh, also, your hair will never be as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true for like 80% of the population. That's true. Yeah. I, do have, I do have so much better hair. Um, Glorious mane. Yes. And I hope uh, all the five guys fries you ate didn't make you too fat. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair... Probably because it's a lot of fries that you get with any five guys. That's <laughs> true. And they're good fries. Yeah. Just remember, I have the tiger. <laughs> uh, I don't know how we never mentioned this on the show. I don't know if we, I don't feel like we mentioned this on the show. Jeff, you got one of the greatest get well videos. Speaking of wrestling. Oh, yeah. You got one of the greatest get well videos I have ever seen. Yes. Uh, so Kyle from Sounding Board used to be a wrestler uh, slash 
I don't know if he was a jobber, probably in, in like the ECW Philly area. So he knows a ton of wrestlers. Um, and he knows the Sandman from ECW, uh, who was a legend back in the day, who he then contacted him, must have given me him a small amount of information of who I am, and then decided to make a promo video shredding me apart. <laughs> Uh, it was and it, amazing. And it was absolutely amazing. He just went to his backyard and with his camera phone and just smoking a cigarette, <laughs> gravelly voice, just in the snow, mocking nice. Jeff. Yep. And Denver and board games and snowboarding. Yeah. Yep. Yes. The Sandman <laughs> sent me a get well soon shred video. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, when I finally saw that I was just blown away. It was yeah. amazing. I need to find a way to. Pull that off of Facebook so I can post it in more accessible areas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that officially now wraps up listener feedback. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Danimal, for the expanse. Yes. I and, am looking forward to playing that. And he sent us earlier a copy of Kalos that yes. we'll be reviewing on the show. Yes, yes. So uh, I'm just waiting for my game now. Yeah, Zach, Zach needs a game now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, send, him, send him a wrestling game. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a, a wrestling... Well, a Lord of the Rings themed high fantasy, high fantasy themed wrestling <laughs> Euro game. That's yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> Bilbo v Gollum <laughs> in the ring. Yeah, and how do you? How do they fight? Worker placement. <laughs> <laughs> no DQs. <laughs> oh, somebody design that game, please, just so that we can make Zach play it. Oh God, I don't want to play that. <laughs> No one wants to play that. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's get over to this part of things. So if you want to get a hold of us, if you want to leave us feedback and be included in a future feedback portion of the show, multiple, multiple ways to do so, starting with... Emails at milehighgameguys.com. You can also tweet us. I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I am Jeff underscore MHGG. We have our Facebook page, facebook.com slash milehighgameguys, uh, that you can like and follow and comment over on. Uh, you can jump over to our Board Game Geek Guild, guild number 2731, that you can join, and then you can comment and participate in the weekly episode posts. Uh, let us know what you're thinking about the things we're doing. And you can also join our Slack channel. Just go to milehighgameguys.com or check out the show notes on your podcast app of choice. There are links to the Slack channel on both of those. And you can join the Slack channel and participate in all of the absolutely ridiculous shenanigans that abound. And Um, especially our new 3D printing corner. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, We're lucky on Paul's like friend Slack with his friends in Chicago. He set up a channel that is just his webcam Posting every five minutes whatever the printer is printing. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, he's got live feeds. <laughs> he also pays for Slack, too, so. Yes, yes. He has a, a lot of other Slacks he does, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, And then finally, we haven't really plugged it in a while, so I'm going to plug it now. We do have our Patreon, patreon.com slash milehighgameguys. If you enjoy the work we do here on the show and you want to give back in some way, shape, or form that isn't just sending us games directly, uh, you can jump over there and pledge uh, whatever amount of money per month that you feel we are worth slash you can afford. Find some balance therein and uh, help us out. We appreciate all of the help we get over there. Yes, we do. So uh, Alexander just bumped his up. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. We certainly appreciate it. Very much so. Uh, Alexander is also, I know, interested in our review this Friday where we review Wingspan. And I know he's interested in... Because thankfully, Twitter is capable of translating entire threads of French so that I actually know what they're talking about when everybody was talking about Wingspan and whether it is worth what it costs. And uh, he said he was interested in hearing our take on it this Friday. So uh, we will have that in a couple days. Yes. um, Yeah, that wraps up all the ways to get a hold of us. Uh, So do so. We enjoy feedback. Also want to throw out, as always, on Wednesday episodes, a huge shout out to our awesome sponsors, Gray Fox Games. Uh, They do a lot to support the show, and we really appreciate that. They will be launching in roughly mid-March sometime the second uh, Kickstarter, second edition of Tsukiyumi Full Moon Down, Um, this time with uh, a whole shit ton of miniatures. So, uh, Oh, boy. Which I think is for the best because we... 
we got a copy of this game from them. And we spent. We got a copy of the uh, yeah older, of the original yes. 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 the yes. first Kickstarter yep. that went through back in 2017. And yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of cardboard and a lot of standees. Yes. Uh, yeah. Very nice art, but yeah. like the amount of minis that are going to be in this game, it's definitely going to be our hundred dollar miniature game of the week. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Assuming it's anywhere near the amount of standees that were in there. So yeah. yeah. We we had a punch party the other day, like. They came over to play board games, and then Megan was still asleep, and we were just killing time. It was like, well, we've got like three games we've all received recently here that need to be punched and organized. And then, so, and then the expanse was delivered as we were doing that yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. So I I started in on Dinogenics. Mm-hmm. Zach grabbed Fallout the board game. Yeah. And Jeff took Sukiyumi, <laughs> and I finished <laughs> punching and organizing Dinogenics. Then joined Jeff punching and standeeing Sukiyumi. While Zach then finished Fallout and then joined yeah. <laughs> and worked with us to finish Tsukuyumi, it ended up being a three-person job. Yeah. It was like uh, a Twilight Imperium level of cardboard chits. Yeah. yeah. Tons and tons of cardboard to punch and uh, standees to standee in that first edition, um, which is kind of frustrating. The first edition, you know, when we review it, their standees were hard to get into the clips. Yeah. There was some tearing of the cardboards. So a uh, switch to minis will be nice in that regard. Yeah. Uh, I was also talking to Gray Fox a little bit about this Kickstarter, getting some information, and uh, there will be some rule changes and tweaks because the one nice thing about the standees is they have information along the top about like what that character's abilities are that is harder to do on minis. So they are changing and tweaking some things. There might not be as many minis. That's, I don't know. I'm expecting that. Yeah. Uh, and probably like maybe like a, a card to go with the minis or something. Like something. They're going to do something uh, just to... So you still have that information yeah. readily accessible uh, since it can't just be on the standee anymore. Uh, they are also cleaning up the rules a lot because it was previously just translated directly to English. This time the rules are being completely rewritten from the ground up in, in English. English. Originally German. German, yeah. So uh, all of those things uh, should hopefully make for a much, much better uh, experience overall. Yep. I'm excited to give it a try. Same. Yeah. That is uh, Sukiyumi Full Moon Down coming, like I said, mid March from Gray Fox. So, Jeff, do you have a prepared statement? As is tradition, Gray Fox Games, quality games cleverly crafted. Also, no one quite knows who or what they are. I'm Zach. I'm Adrian. And you're Jeff. I'm also a person. So, that's who and what I am a human. A human. Okay. Or we're all a simulation. You can never quite know. Well, if we're a simulation, I'm a simulation of a human, thus making me. A human. Oh, it makes you a simulation of a human. Um, and most of your simulation, and it, or at least your simulation. I don't, we'll yeah. solve this in the courts. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, for the show. Be sure to catch us, like I said, on Friday for Wingspan. As always, I've been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm still Hobble Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.